Now let's go design and build the front panel for our Wi-Fi display. Let's go find the data sheet first so we know our sizes. I usually start by just going to Google and looking up the thing I'm trying to measure. Sometimes there's some data sheets with measurements already provided for you. Now we found our image and we can see that it lists a whole bunch of different dimensions. We need the ones for the outer edge of the LCD screen itself and the screw holes. Here I tried to highlight some of the important values that will help us make our design. Using the measurements on the diagram, we can see our LCD is about 97 millimeters by 39.5 millimeters. The screen itself is a little smaller, but the hole will need to be at least this big. The tolerances are listed, but we should include some extra. We can also see the screw holes are about 3 millimeters in diameter and the placement relative to the center line of the LCD. Now that we've seen the measurement in the data sheet, we should check our real LCD using some calipers to make sure the measurements are accurate. We don't want to accidentally be using the data sheet for someone else's LCD. We can see that the measurement of the screw holes is pretty close. I was looking at around 3 millimeters, depending on when I measured. Now we need to measure the outer bezel of the LCD to make sure our hole is going to be the right size. Now let's set our page to be in millimeters, just like the data sheet and our other measurements. Now let's use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle the size of the PCB. This shape should be 98 by 60 millimeters. We can use the boxes at the top to type in these measurements. Since this will be laser cut, we need to make sure that the fill is disabled and the lines are set to a very thin width. In Inkscape, after you're changing your line width, make sure that you double check the size of your shape. Sometimes it will change. Now let's add the outline of the LCD. This rectangle should be 93 by 39.5 millimeters. We can see this in the data sheet and verify it with our calipers if we want. Now we can select both of our shapes and use Inkscape to line and distribute tab in order to center them on each other. Now we can use the circle tool to draw the circles for the screw holes. We'll make these 3.3 millimeters in diameter. Remember to set your line widths, double check the size, and set the fill. We can type in the X and Y values in order to position it where the data sheet says it should be. Inkscape uses the lower left corner of the shapes to set the X and Y position. Sometimes a calculator can be handy, especially when dealing with circles, because you have to subtract one half of the diameter in order to find the center point which is used in the diagram. Now, to help us position all four of the screw holes, we can make a bounding box that is 97 by 55 millimeters, which is the distance between the midpoints of each of the four screw holes. This way, we can take one and basically copy paste it around. Using a real CAD program helps make some of this stuff a little easier, but hey, Inkscape is free. Once we have the bounding box correctly positioned and our screw hole lined up on the corner, we can press Ctrl D to duplicate our screw hole. Then we can select the screw hole in the bounding box and press H or V in order to flip it. Duplicate the screw holes again, flip it once more in the opposite direction, and we'll have a screw hole in each of the four corners at the correct spacing. Now we'll add another box to represent the actual display part of the LCD. We want to use a different color for the outline of this shape so that we know not to actually cut it out. I mean, I guess if we did cut it out, it wouldn't matter, but it's extra cutting time that we can avoid. Now we can increase the document size and begin working on the actual outline for the full panel. Basically, I just want a rectangular shape with some rounded corners. We can set the roundness of the corners by double-clicking on the outline. After that, we can change the values in the RX and RY fields to make it look how we want. For small designs like this, after I get it the way I want, I like to print it out and then cut out the shapes to do a test fit on paper because it's cheaper and easier than using the real laser cutter. So we've printed out our laser cut sketch to verify the sizing. So we have our paper and we can just lay our little screen on top and kind of say, hey, these are a little realistic. It is actually line up everything and cut it out as a test fit.
The fit for the LCD was a little tight, so I went ahead and enlarged it and printed out another. I cut this out on a full spectrum laser, which is pretty easy to use. You basically print from Inkscape. My first attempt didn't quite cut all the way through, and I saw I accidentally cut the wrong line, cutting on the inner line for the LCD instead of the one it actually has to fit through. I cut it again, this time using two passes, and making sure to cut the right line. The panel looked a little small, so I made a bigger design, and then cut it out again. I used a Dremel to cut out a groove in the back. This will hold the LCD pin so it will sit flush. Now we can bolt on the LCD and plug in the wires. After getting it together the first time, I decided to take it back apart and use longer bolts. This would let me use one of my scrap cuttings on the back as kind of a standoff from the wall to help it sit flatter. I was able to stain the wood and then glue down the Wemos board. Now it's finally looking good enough to mount on the wall. I put mine next to the front door so I can see it whenever I'm leaving.